Hey yard nerds, today I am putting Hydrus pigment based liquid watercolors to the NanoTube Studio field test. We are going to be painting this cute little piece and we're going to be using this amazing ceramic mixing palette sent to me as a birthday present from my friend Kabocha. I am really excited to get cracking on this guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by applying some of the colors we wish to use to this palette and then mixing them with water. If you guys are interested in learning more about Hydrus liquid watercolors, you can check out my unboxing swatch here. I'm going to be using the resulting swatches as a bit of a reference off to the side. For this field test, you're going to want a cup of water as well as a selection of your favorite brushes and a paper towel for blotting. I'm going to be working on the majority of this field test in time lapse, so things are going to be a bit sped up, but I do plan on doing a voiceover to explain different parts of my process. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the description below. And let me know what you guys enjoy using Hydrus watercolors to paint. What sort of things do you guys enjoy painting? And if you're new around here and you're not yet a subscriber, make sure you click subscribe and hit that bell button so you are always notified of when I have fresh new content for you guys to enjoy. And speaking of enjoying, I hope you guys will enjoy. So for the background, I decided to apply some clean water to the whole background rather than doing a toned wash. And then I dropped Hansa Yellow Light, Viridian Green, and Turquoise Blue into the background. So you guys can see me dropping those colors in. I'm using Fluid 100 Cotton Rag Watercolor Paper. Um, my problem with Fluid 100 is it tends to dry out really quickly, which if you want to work fast, that can be great. But if you want color into color, wet into wet blending, this paper isn't necessarily the best paper for you. I'm also working at almost full saturation. My brush is wet with clean water, but I'm dropping the colors like directly from the dropper into the rose palette and then from the rose palette directly onto the paper. And I kind of expected the colors to become sort of muddied or muted or a little grayer as they dry. That has That's a tendency with a lot of pigment based watercolors or at least a lot of the ones I've been reviewing lately. But the nice thing about the Hydrus liquid watercolors is they really maintain their intensity. And I was kind of going for a sunlit summery dapple effect. And then as the layers dried, I added a bit more. I did notice that as the paint dries out in the palette, it tends to get a little bit gummy. Jane Blundell, and I'm going to link that in the description below, Jane Blundell talked about that um, in her blog post review of Hydrus watercolors. She mentions that Hydrus works best fresh. So I am mixing up skin tones now, and some colors are much stronger than others. I noticed that my raw sienna has gotten really goopy, so I mixed it with some water first. And here I'm just applying some really watered down ultramarine blue to the whites of her eyes. Um, and you guys noticed when I mixed in the vermilion, it immediately took over and the color had to be completely remixed, leaving just a little bit of the initial mix at the bottom and then adding in some wet raw sienna. And these colors are really saturated. Now I felt that the skin tone mix, raw sienna and vermilion was a little bit muddy, though raw sienna wants to sediment in a way that looks kind of dirty as a skin tone. And this I found was particularly apparent when I'd done fewer skin tones. In order to mix up the hat color, I mixed Hansa Yellow Medium with raw sienna since I don't have a yellow ochre. And uh, the raw sienna is sedimented in a dusty, dirty way on the hat as well. That wasn't quite as noticeable as on the skin since it's a straw hat. We kind of expect that. 
I also noticed that it's difficult to get color saturation up with this particular mix, the raw sienna and vermilion. And it's hard to kind of remix the color without drastically changing it. I'm not sure if my raw sienna has gone over and it's time to toss it or what, but it's several years old, so that may be what's going on with it. I've found that mixing this skin tone is a challenge with this sort of muddy mix. I'm not sure if it's because of the raw sienna's age or maybe too much of the liquid has evaporated or if it was part of the bad batch that watercolor misfit got years ago. And for the shadow on the hat, it's just raw sienna. Now I'm mixing up a shadow color for the skin tone. And that is ultramarine violet with crinacridone violet. And it may be too dark a tone for the shadow, but I ended up finding that I liked it. It's not quite as purple slash red influence as I might have liked. That would have added kind of a fresher color the way we kind of get that from the core watercolors, but it's still a really nice color. Now one of my big complaints is that these colors are not actually transparent and you can really tell with the earth pigments like raw sienna and raw umber. And that kind of contributes to a muddy appearance with this piece. So here I'm mixing or adding a darker version of the uh, ultramarine red violet and the quin violet as cast shadows. And I'm using this porcelain rose palette because porcelain palettes are really great for liquid watercolors. You can mix the colors a little bit more cleanly. Um, it's not prone to staining. You can also use a butcher's tray. I found these wells were perfect for me. I tend to paint very small. And there's lots of little wells where you can mix up colors, but if you paint larger, you may want a larger version of this or perhaps a different version of this or maybe even a butcher's block. So I'm applying shadow color to the top and I'm gonna paint her top yellow, but I wanted to sort of start establishing the shadows. And her top is Hansa Yellow Medium. And it's spring here, so you know I'm already thinking about Nashville. I mean, dang it, it's spring here in Nashville, so you know I'm already thinking about summer. Adding another layer of the skin tone. Now, with these colors, normally I would allow colors to evaporate in order to get more intense tones, but the goopiness is a little bit prohibitive. So I added a little bit of turquoise blue to the shirt as like a cast color shadow. And then I applied quinacridone magenta to her shorts, and I found that it was um it was a little bit patchy, which I wasn't really happy about that. And I'm using vermilion to apply her blush for her cheeks and her lips, and then adding another layer of the quin magenta mixed with a bit of the quin violet. and still working on establishing those shadows. Something that I do like about these watercolors is that they're not that prone to lifting, so you can actually do a lot of layers and a lot of glazing with these. And some colors are more transparent than others, so you may wanna do your own transparency tests at home. Now I'm using watered down red oxide to color the base on her hair and on her eyes. And that is a really watered down version of red oxide. Red oxide is quite a strong opaque color. I also applied freckles to her skin using the same watered down version of that color. Now I'm increasing the shadows on her shorts using uh, ultramarine red violet mixed with the 
quinacridone violet and I'm going to intensify the shadows on her shirt by using chrome yellow mixed with Hansa yellow medium. Now I'm working with a more concentrated version of red oxide. I'd added a couple more drops to the water. And I'm trying to leave some of the papers natural white for highlights. Since she ha is wearing um, beads in her hair, I want those to appear transparent. So I'm painting a little bit of the hair through that. And then I'm adding an even more saturated layer of red oxide. So in the background, I'm using Hansa Yellow Light to paint leaves, kind of trying to tie the background together a bit more. What I really like about Hansa Yellow Light is it is still transparent, so you can still see the colors through it but there's enough opacity that it's not just a completely transparent glaze. I'm also using Quinn Magenta to paint some nice loose roses on her shirt. And I'm gonna use that to paint the threads that serve as straps as well. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of their Viridian Green, which is not really a Viridian Green, it's not a sap green either. It's kind of a, a blue spring green kind of color. I'm using that to paint the leaves, another layer of leaves in the background. So hydrous watercolors could be great if you love doing layer upon layer of overlapping dappled color. If you enjoy achieving color through very thin glazes, hydrous watercolors might work very well for you. I haven't tested it on cellulose paper. That might change things. I'm using a darker concentration of the same Viridian Green to paint smaller, no actually, that looks like blue aqua, or yeah, probably blue aqua to paint the leaves on her shirt. And then I'm using turquoise blue to paint the leaves in the background, another layer of leaves. So I'm trying to build up lighting and contrast. And my goal with this is for the side that's being hit by the sunlight, so her face, for that to be a little bit yellower and for the side that's away from the sunlight to be a little bit bluer. So now I'm trying to mix up a really dark brown for her hair. and. You saw me swatch, you saw me try several colors. I never really achieved a very dark brown. What I got was kind of a neutral tint. And when you paint the neutral tip tint on top of the red oxide, you actually get a nice Van Dyke brown. So again, these colors can be really great for creating color by layering. Not all watercolors will deliver those sort of results. So I wanted a little bit more cast shadow lighting, a little more atmospheric lighting. So I'm using ultramarine blue to paint the shaded underside of her hat. And this was really cool because I was able to do a really light glaze of it without disrupting the earlier colors. Normally this would just completely turn to mud. But with the hydrous watercolors, I was able to apply a very thin glaze and achieve the effect I wanted. I also used ultramarine blue to add kind of atmospheric shading to her arms and to her skin. This is another problem area. This is another area that with other watercolors, that would turn to mud. That would not work well. So techniques that work digitally or even with markers don't always work well with watercolors. It seems like hydrous watercolors, however, allow you to bring some of those techniques back into your work. And then I'm adding some of that ultramarine blue to her shorts as well. And I haven't noticed any significant color reactivation or color lifting.
So these could be really great watercolors for illustrators. Now they're supposed to be non-clogging because you're supposed to be able to use them in an airbrush. I find that they are very prone to clogging. They really need a lot of shaking and they start to clump after a while, even ruining the eyedroppers. This is particularly true with my Viridian Green. I'm not sure if it's user error, poor storage or what. They were kept inside in a climate controlled house away from sunlight. I'm not really sure why they couldn't stand the test of time. Maybe somebody from Dr. P.H. Martins can get back to me about that. So now I'm adding some white highlights with some M. Graham's gouache. I'd wanted to add white highlights with my Dr. P.H. Martins Bleed Proof White, but as I've mentioned in other videos, sometimes it will seal itself shut and I just didn't feel like waiting and uh, soaking it in water for it to kind of loosen up. So I just went ahead and went with some M. Graham's white gouache. And at this point, what I'm really trying to do is I'm really trying to pop the contrast, make the colors pop without adding too many additional layers. Now, part of what kind of messed up my contrast is since these colors are somewhat opaque, they cover up my line art a bit, which kind of makes everything the same mass tone, the same hue. So at this point, I'm just about finished for that evening and other than adding some highlights, I'm going to let this dry overnight. That's another thing about watercolors is sometimes the colors settle overnight and it can kind of change how they appear. So it's, and also it gives you a chance to come back with fresh eyes. Adding another layer of skin tone glazing. Like I said earlier, um, I really kind of struggled with the skin tones. I struggled getting them contrasted enough, getting them saturated enough. All right, so this is a fresh new morning and those are my color notes. My big focus for this fresh new morning is adding more blue in her sh shaded side and more yellow to her sunlit side. And I know my head keeps dipping into the shot. I'm sorry about that. So I'm adding in more of the turquoise blue and a little bit more of the Viridian green, just kind of building up more of that leaf texture. And I started with using Hansa Yellow Medium since that's a warm yellow. I thought that could be like a sunlit yellow, but then I ended up going back and adding in some Hansa Yellow Light as well. It's kind of a cooler influence yellow. And because it's so thin, because it's so transparent, I feel like the addition is subtle. But that's all it really needs to be. So long as people still get an impression of light and shadow, subtle can be good. And I'm using turquoise blue to add the spine of the leaf and then a little bit of delineated shadow just so that it doesn't completely turn to mud. As you guys know, I have a tendency to overwork pieces. So it's good to kind of pull things in, call them done after a certain point in time. So that about covers it for this watercolor piece. I wanted to try swatching some of these colors reconstituted and talk about the pros and cons of Hydrus pigment base liquid watercolors. Okay, so our pros are the colors glaze and layer really well, even if they aren't as transparent as I would like. You can do some really nice color glazes that wouldn't be an option with traditional watercolors. Their rainbow colors are bright and saturated. Colors are not prone to reactivating or lifting, so you can do many layers or glazes without it turning to mud. And a tiny bit goes a really long way, so this might be difficult to control. This leads us right into our cons. It gets goopy as they dry, dry out, leaving weird flakes and clumps. They do not reconstitute well, and it dries fast in these shallow palettes. 
Allowing colors to evaporate to intensify color may result in goopy colors. You're not going to get more concentrated than what is in the bottle. With the colors I have, it's difficult to mix dark colors. I have a lot of trouble with their earth tones separating and sedimenting out, turning to glop and making unpleasant mixes. And I struggled to get skin tones dark enough with the colors I had. It was difficult to build up contrast on the skin. Based on that result, I'm actually going to try applying some of the reconstituted skin tone to Kara's skin because I felt like I really struggled to get the skin tone dark enough on this piece. So I'm just going to use it here and there as kind of like a, an accent. Talking about reconstituted colors, some of the co colors reconstituted a bit better than other, others. Ultramarine blue, chrome yellow, Hansa yellow light, red oxide, quin magenta, quin violet, ultramarine red violet all seem to reconstitute well. My raw sienna vermilion mix also reconstituted decently, which gives me the darker skin tone I'm using here. So I decided to go in and add some accents to bump up the contrast on the skin. Viridian green does not reconstitute well at all. It's like a pale shade of its former self. So since I lost so much contrast uh, painting this piece, I decided to go ahead and re-ink it a bit using a Pigma Sakura FB. And again, I know my head's in the shot, I apologize. My eyesight is atrocious, so I have to get all up on top of it, which means y'all get to be all up on top of my head. I do feel like re-inking it a bit helped a lot. It added some of the contrast, it re-established some of the lines so they weren't as muddy. Maybe you don't notice a difference and maybe you will decide that you don't need to do this in your own work, but I felt like it really helped a lot. So I've enjoyed playing around with Hydrus liquid watercolors. I like some colors better than others. But considering they're in a format I don't currently use at all, I typically use pan watercolors, I don't know how I'm going to work this into my regular work. The Viridian Green, the Hansa Yellows, the Turquoise Blue, they're all beautiful, slightly transparent colors that would work really well for painting foliage, creating forest scenes, painting grass, you know, all the sort of stuff I paint all the time. I would like to add some more colors to my collection and I would really like to solve the problem of these sedimenting gooping earth tones. Particularly bad is raw umber. Raw sienna, I think I've finally gotten it homogenized again through copious amounts of shaking. But I don't own any sepias, any Van Dyke browns, any sort of darker browns that might neutralize strong colors. I'd also like to maybe get a couple more blues, but other than that, I think my collection is just about complete. What's neat about these is that a container, a what, one ounce? Yep, one US fluid ounce, 30 milliliter container, is about $7, so they're very economical. Thank you guys so much for watching this field test of Hydrus pigment based watercolors. I think I am just about finished. I hope you found it helpful, useful, and informative, perhaps even inspiring. Let me know in the comments below how you guys like to use Hydrus watercolors or if there are any other liquid watercolors that you're currently using. If you're not yet a subscriber and you like this sort of content, I highly recommend you click the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you never miss an update. If you're interested in more watercolor art, check out my watercolor basics playlist here on this channel and my watercolor basics hub page at natosoup.blogspot.com. I've got loads of great watercolor tutorials designed to get you guys painting. 
If you guys think this character is cute, if you're interested in more drawing tutorials, check out the card for drawing tutorials here and let me know what you guys are interested in learning. Every Friday, I host a Power Hour art stream where I do drawing demonstrations. So your suggestion might just make it to Power Hour. And again, if you think this art is cute, check out the comic this little cutie's from at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. I want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to my partners on Patreon. Their support makes this possible. If you want to help me continue to make more tutorials and reviews like this one, head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup and join the art nerd community. Have a great day, guys. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye, guys!